Amen. Yeah, grant us utterance and insight and entrance into the realm of the Spirit to effect the judgment that is already written, to bind kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, you're welcome. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right, just in case you are equipped with the Bible, turn to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, beginning from verse 1, we have an executive summary of the creation documentary. An executive summary of the creation documentary. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heavens and the earth. Verse 4 is the verse of interest in this case. And the reason for which we bring verse 4 to mind is that there is another individual in the Godhead that is showcased in verse 4. One member of the Godhead steps out of the circle, the quadrant of the Godhead to perform an activity. This is different from the account that we read of in the book of Genesis chapter 1. For instance, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 26, it reads in Genesis 1 verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our own image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Are you there? Okay, flip your Bible to Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5 to verse 7, you see another member of the Godhead, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb before of the field before it grew, for the Lord God, underline the Lord God. The Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Verse 6, And there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Yes, 7, And the Lord God. Are you there? Oh, you are not there. I'm the Lord God. Do you still remember Project Man? Let us make man. Do you realize that it will take an act of God to make man? An act of the entire members of the Godhead to come about man, us. We need to engage it. And there was a member of the Godhead that was responsible for the creation side of man. The creation side has to do with bringing something into existence without any raw material. Are you there? Then in Genesis chapter 2, beginning from verse 5 to 7, we see the formation side of man. In the formation side of man, man, the material aspect of man was forged out of existing raw material. So the word for create is bara, bringing into existence without any raw material. The word for formed is the same word for modeling, molding, modeling. And that required the raw material. So what exactly is going on here? Are you still with me? Okay, now I got your attention. If you go to verse 4, 
of Genesis chapter 2, that's the first time we see that individual called the Lord God or Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Elohim. That's the pre-incarnate name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah Elohim. All right. So the first time Jehovah Elohim was mentioned in the entire Bible is the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. So the Bible says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Notice heavens is in plural. These are the generations. And anytime I, I, I raise this scripture in the congregation, I always tell you that this scripture is a point of controversy because we are just beginning the project of creation at this time. It is too infantile for us to be talking about the issue of generations. Is that not so? Oh yeah, okay, you are not. We, we just started the project. So why are we talking about generations? I want you to think about it before we continue on our journey. I think we should be talking about generations after a period of time. Maybe the cycle of life are taking place and we want to establish a documentary of existence. So we introduce the word generations. But this word generations is being introduced even before the action really starts. Whenever you see a verse of scripture like that, the way to engage it is from the linguistic perspective. It means that the English word that is used to depict the original um, linguistic structure uh, doesn't have the stature to bring out the meaning. And you need to understand that um, how many of you have ever seen a funnel before funnel? So in Makodi, people don't know what a funnel is. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you will notice that a funnel has a big entrance, but a little outlet. Okay? Now that's what happened when the Bible was translated from those original languages to English language. The original languages had capacities for expression much more than English language. So it was like a funnel. So what I mean it was like a funnel is that there were so many meanings that were lost in ling linguistic transit because English language happens not to have as much capacity as the original languages that were used to write the Bible. The truth of the Word of God is actually preserved in the original language in which it was written. So if we want to do a journey towards the recovery of truth, we will need to be skillful in the original linguistic context. So the scripture that we just read calls for a linguistic recovery, calls for a linguistic recovery. So um, we'll need to click on that word just in case you have an electronic Bible that is equipped with a lexicon. We will advise that uh, we click on uh, the word generations. When you click on the word generations, you will find the Hebrew word tolida. Tolida. Tolida means descendant. It means family tree. It means to give birth. And it means generations means what? Descendant. It means a family tree. It means to give birth. And it can also mean descendant. Second thing I need to say about the Hebrew word that is of interest in this scripture is that that Hebrew word is comparative in nature. You cannot use the word tolida if except you are comparing two extremes. It's a comparative word that brings two extremes into context for analysis. So we need to find which two words are being compared and contrasted. When we understand that, it will be easy to apply the meaning as it arises from the linguistic context. Are you still with me? It seems you are not with me. Okay. So the two words that are being compared and contrasted in that verse of scripture is the word heavens and the word earth. 
So these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. You know, I told you it's a comparative word. It analyzes two extremes. And the extremes in this case is the heavens and the earth. The heavens in contrast with the earth. The invincible realm in contrast with the natural realm. Now, so this scripture is a major scripture that reveals how God created the natural realm. How, the how. Now, the reason why I need to trouble you with all of this theology is to afford us the opportunity to see beyond English language, to see beyond the letters, and to see the construct that is captured in this verse of scripture. And to properly analyze it, to understand such things that God had to undergo in order for him to bring into existence this physical world. Are you there? Then when you understand how this physical world emerged, it will be easy for you to understand the matter of altar. Um, according to the contrast and the comparison, that is in that verse of scripture. Tolidal means to give birth. The only way we can have a family, the only way we can have generations, if there is, if there is a system of procreation, a system of giving birth. So what that scripture is saying is that the earth, which happens to be the physical realm, was given birth to from the spiritual realm. The Earth was drawn physical, was drawn from the spiritual. Um, I would like you to cast your mind back just in case you are a woman and you have given birth to a child. You will notice that you didn't need to feed the child in your womb because the moment you took in food, anything you ate, the child ate by some means that you may not know. But the child was feeding through your own feeding. The hunger of the child. And sometimes the hunger is specific. It seeks, cola not, it seeks. Huh. <laughs> seeks okra without, without, uh, without oil. Hallelujah. It is that which you are carrying that is regulating what you're hungry for. Now, do you also, are you there? In the same way. There is a connection between the invisible world, the umbilical cord that connects the invisible world and the visible world is still intact. So people that know how to manip manipulate the realm of the invisible can control the realm of the visible because the umbilical cord that connects the two realms is still very much intact. If your, your pregnant wife drinks Coke, the child that your wife is carrying has drank Coke. Are you there? So the only, the, the way to influence the child is to influence the mother that is connected to the child. So the mother of the physical realm is the invincible realm. So if we can influence the invincible realm, it will naturally impact upon the physical realm. The physical realm will receive such influence within the window of its times and seasons. And it will look as if it is a natural occurrence. Are you still following me? Notice that in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God gives humankind the dominion mandate. The scope of our dominion is accurately articulated in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and if you read carefully, you will find that we are supposed to exercise dominion over the fish of the sea, the aquatic realm, over the beast of the earth, the terrestrial realm, over the fowls of the air, the atmospheric realm, over all the earth, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. All of these 
constitutes the jurisdiction under which man is supposed to exercise dominion. And then this man that is supposed to exercise dominion over this sphere of influence was now created to have a spirit, to be spirit, soul, and body. Why? How is it supposed to really exercise dominion? Meanwhile, the last time you met something that looked like a snake, we know how you, you responded. It's not, you didn't confirm that it was a snake, it just... We went to South Africa and they took us to a resort. They said the, there are wild animals here that we should enter a vehicle and they will take you into the forest. You will see lion in the morning, you will see. And I told them that, you have you ever cast out a, an evil spirit before? They said, no. I said, me, I cast them out. There's a possibility that one of the spirits I've casted out can prove it. <laughs> so, there was no need for me to now be entering vehicle to look for a lion when I have the pictures on my phone. <laughs> Suddenly, one of the demons you dealt with in, in Gambia will hop on the lion. They said, no, when they, in the morning time, they would have fed in the night, so they would be heavy. <laughs> if you do business in the realm of the spirit, there are some things, don't play some games. May the Lord help you in Jesus' name. Dominion. Part of the utensils that we need to exercise dominion is the altar. It is through the altar that we can interface with the invincible realm. And when we adequately interface with the invincible realm, we can exercise dominion over the natural. And it is very obvious that our fathers and our ancestors, our African elders, are well educated in this fact. There are altars that are set up to regulate families. Altars that are set up to regulate communities. And what we call culture in most cases in our communities are prescriptions that came from the rulers that are the territorial spirits that are consulted on these altars. Most of what we call regulations, the things that happen before a burial can take place. Those regulations that regulate a community. In fact, are you there? What constitutes a taboo among a people that whose reference point is not the Bible? Are wisdoms that were drawn from the spirits that were invited to take the center stage of influence in communities and families as the case may be so just in case you're an african and your roots can be traced to one of our villages in benue state in kogi state in national state somewhere it means that there is an altar somewhere that is seeking to regulate your life i know the scriptures you want to quote at me you stay with me stay with me your first scripture you want to quote at me is if any man be in christ he's a new creation all things are passed away, and behold, all things have been made new. Hallelujah. Um, first of all, I need to tell you that there is a difference between a verdict in court and the enforcement of justice. Have you... The people that give the verdicts are the people that are in the judiciary, the people that enforce the verdicts, are the people in the armed forces. It's a different department altogether. You can, that's one. Then number, hmm? Under what circumstances can you straw where you have not bestowed labor? It is, yes. Inheritance is one pure case, inheritance. If you have read the Bible, you will see genealogy, especially in the book of Matthew. You are just starting the book of Matthew and Genealogy issues are critical issues because every man has a root. And the principle of inheritance, the principle that God respects, is the principle that demons respect. So if you are called to, 
to reap where you have not sown, you are called to straw where you have not bestowed labor. That's the principle of inheritance. So you hear that his name is David, the son of Jesse. And sometimes people ask, whose son is he? We cannot understand him until we know his roots. So the issue of inheritance is a critical issue in, in the Bible. And just like we inherited blessings, there are also liabilities that are part of the cargo that we inherit across generational lines. Mm. I'm saying that the devil has embarked on several intelligent transactions in a bid to seek legitimacy in your bloodline, in your community, in your family, in context that you cannot be dissociated from, in context that you can only be released from by the implementation of the will of God that is captured in salvation. And that's why I told you that there's a difference between a verdict and what? Enforcement. And um, it's also needful for us to bring some 16 years of counseling on the table. Because the people that come to me for counseling are believers. And I've seen all kinds of manip manipulations. I've seen all kinds of manipulations among my colleagues, preachers of the gospel. For instance, me, I was telling, I was telling a brother the other day, there is a place I go to pray in Lagos. That place doesn't sound like Lagos. You know, Lagos is very energetic. The place I'm talking about is calm. It's like a place that is not in Lagos that doesn't look like Lagos. So that's where I go to pray. And I discovered that it's very easy for me to hear God there. That's why I normally go there frequently. So the last time I was there, are you there? I didn't know my wife was praying. My wife was doing one dangerous prayer in Makoti. I was in my own prayer in Lagos. And I did not know that my wife included our, our family members, my own family members, in the prayer. And they were representing our family. I was just going there to do my own prayer. Then I saw a vision. Just a few minutes after I started this prayer, I saw a vision. I saw myself. I saw our firstborn. I saw my elder brother. Then I saw one of my cousins, and we were very old. Meanwhile, I don't need to tell you the prayers that my wife was leading, the other people to pray. Very powerful prayers, and the prayers were family-based. It was the result of the prayers that she was leading that I was receiving in my own prayer. When we now came back to discuss, because we discussed every night, that, okay, I prayed like this, this, this. So when we came back to discuss, we now discovered at the time when they were praying their own prayer, coincided with the time when I was in my own prayer in Lagos. So it was easy to believe that it was a result of what they were praying that I was receiving. I knew my grandfather as an old man that was more than a hundred years, was not using a cane to walk, he didn't use glasses to read. He had a straight back and he was very tall. I knew him for more. In fact, he was looking for death. Where is death for him to die? When that man died, his descendants could not live more than half his age. He died about 100 and something. My dad died. My dad had an elder brother that died when he was nine. My dad had an elder sister that died before she was 60 that I knew her. My dad became the firstborn, not by birth, but by circumstances. Then he left the scene at 62. The next person that left the scene was 64. The next person that left the scene was 
58. Next person that, so you see that there was no, no more strength to hit even 70. And when you notice that it is a pattern, are you there? Then it means an altar is involved. I will tell you the symptoms of how to detect the presence of an altar. One of which, and it's not for this week, one of which is a scientific pattern, a pattern that is becoming scientific because it's consistent. So when I went to Lagos to pray, I finished preaching one of my sessions in Wolfbeck and I did not go home. I went to my prayer. Yes, I went to my prayer. We finished that prayer 1 a.m. in the morning. The first scripture Baba quoted to me was, he that loveth his life will lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake will keep it. Then I saw that vision. Then he told me, because you are willing to exalt my purpose more than your own life, you will live long. And not just you only, the grace for long life in your family that necromancy snuffed out has been restored. That's why I saw old people in the front. Meanwhile, this is my prayer, or what I'm receiving was, when I came to discover their prayer point, it was a product of their prayer effort that gave me the results that I got that night. Are you with me? So, could it be that my life was short, even as I was preaching to all of you? <laughs> oh, you are not following me. The verdict was already there in the realm of the Spirit. It was just that I was not seeing it. Thank God for the interventions that took place and the transactions that took place. All of that was reversed. So, Pamashika came to visit me. What day is that? Was it yesterday? Huh? Day before yesterday. Say, so you will live long. You know, I've heard that before. God told me, He brought the confirmation. So I began to wonder what, what is this dealing around living long now? All of those dealings came from a transaction. May you not be quoting the scripture. If any man be in Christ and then the poster of the obituary comes out. To enforce the will of God, you need an altar. We know it's God's will for you to live long. But the will of God will not just come to pass because it is God's will. It will come to pass because it's enforced. There are other wills that, that also implicate you that are not necessarily the will of God, but they have the potential of coming to pass if your priesthood does not stop it. Remember, remember, this physical world was given birth to from the spiritual world and it can be manipulated from that point. Have you ever taken inventory? When other people get promoted, it's easy. Your own, your own is always like this. Ah. So we need to do something this evening to ensure that you don't take some things for granted. Are you there? Meanwhile, I, I hope you, okay, I need to tell you of my training. My training, I was trained in the faith block, the faith highway. We're trained to be faith teachers, faith preachers. So, I know how to declare and clear. <laughs> I know how to name and claim, but I've gone deep with God and I've found 
That's some of the strategies we engage for results. They are not, they, are, they don't have sufficient stature to combat legalities. If a man is convicted of a crime by the Beno State Judiciary, are you there? You can't come and declare and set him at liberty. You can't name freedom, you are released, and that becomes the token of his freedom. A legal situation will be solved in a legal way. Are you there? So don't run away and just be declaring things. You will need to solve the problem the, the way the shape of the problem is. There are tools and utensils that we have in the new creation that are potent enough to, re to reverse verdicts that have been proclaimed over your lineage. I don't have time to take you on a journey and show you the city of Jericho that a man placed a curse on that city. I said, the man that will rise to build the gate of the city, this is what will happen to him. The one that will rise to, to this is what will happen to him. And do you know that aeons later, aeons, somebody rose and attempted construction. It was at the cost of the person's child because there was a cost that was in the land. Even though his motives were, were motivated, he was motivated by God to begin the reconstruction. The fact that God motivated him did not, did not, did not, did not absorb him from the legality that existed in that context. It was with grieving and mourning that the foundations were laid. If a certain challenge is judicial in nature, the solution will be judicial in nature. That was why God did not just come to us and declare that all of you are born again in Jesus' name. The situation was a legal situation and God addressed that situation by a legal answer. Do you understand that? In the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10, we see the two sides of redemption, the legal side and the organic side. The reason why redemption has a legal appendage is because the situation of departure that found expression Making man need redemption was a judicial situation and the response of God would be a judicial response. In the law of the Bible, if an angel causes a problem, it's an angel that will solve the problem. If it is God that causes the problem, it will be God that will come to solve it. If, it is, if the problem was caused by the sons of God, it will take another generation of sons of God to solve the problem that the first sons of God set in motion. The way the problem was created, that is how the problem will be solved. Are you there? And I just wanted to bring to your notice several Bible-recognized realities that can be the basis of your being implicated, one of which is inheritance. All right, you're already frowning. Inheritance, one of them. So a man went to, he stole his neighbor's bicycle and sold it. The neighbor went and consulted, consulted a Dibia. Brought a Dibia and placed a curse on the person that stole his bicycle. And this was the nature of the curse. If he eats rice, let him become sick and die. So the actual man that stole the bicycle ate rice and died. The son of that man, who happens to be born again and was attending a Pentecostal church, notices that whenever he eats rice, he becomes terribly sick. He went to consult a doctor. A doctor said, ah, ah, it's an allergy. So anything you are allergic to, it is medically advised that you should avoid it. So based on doctor's instruction, he avoided rice and lived considerably for a certain age. Then, a very senior man of God in this nation, he had the attention of that man of God and told him about his rice experience. Ah! Then the man now said, oh, 
your, your, your father stole a, a, a bicycle. Gave the guy the download of how the father ate rice and died. And he knows that it was rice the father was eating when life left him. So how do we do this? He said, take this bicycle, go and buy a bicycle, give to the son, because the, the man that brought the beer had died. So go and give the son of that man a bicycle. So he went because it is theft that was the cause. You won't pray in tongues and pray it away. Oh my. Are you there? So restitution was the answer. They restored the bicycle to the son of that man and instantly the spirit that was bringing the affliction lost jurisdiction. After he obeyed and he went to meet the pastor, the pastor was eating rice so they had to share rice. That was how he was brought back to the club of rice eaters. May you eat rice in the name of Jesus. He was brought back. So the first thing that we need to look at is what we call inheritance. Inheritance is one of the factors that can implicate you. The ground that the devil has secured has nothing to do with your own life. It has everything to do with something, a garbage, a liability that you inherited. And that can become a premise of negative legality upon which Satan can stand to manipulate your destiny. Remember, remember, remember that this physical world came out, was given birth to from where? From the invisible world. And any man that has a handle on how to manipulate the invisible world will dominate the physical world. The second thing that can lend an opportunity for manipulation around your life is what we call iniquity. First is inheritance. Second is iniquity. Iniquity. And iniquity, let me give you a very simple definition of iniquity. So that uh, the one you can remember, not necessarily a, a theological one, right? Iniquity is when, basic definition of iniquity is when a man uses his will against the will of God. Uses his will against the will of God. It is an insult in the sight of God that has grievous con consequences that are transgenerational. And one of, one of those scenarios where the will of man is used against the will of God is in idolatry. 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 A certain brother is a churchgoer. A churchgoer is not very serious with his Christian life. And then he died mysteriously. When he died mysteriously, some women came and said, he cannot die like a chicken. And the evidence that they brought that he cannot die like a chicken was that it was his grandfather that translated the hymn book to their language. And because of that, he has credit on his life. Do you know that on the base of that credit, they pleaded with heaven and the guy's life was restored? You know why? There was an inheritance in his lineage, an inheritance of goodwill. They used that to plead their case in the court of heaven and heaven. You see, raising the dead is a tricky matter. We will not talk about it today. We will we'll need to bring some evidences first, about 12 evidences, before we start talking about raising the dead. It's a very tricky matter. One of the things that can enhance it is your inheritance. How many of you still remember the woman that died, is it Dockers in the Bible? And they brought evidences that, no, this type should not, no, no, this one cannot be killed like a chicken. She must live and fulfill her days. And there were evidences that were brought forth and the Apostle Paul, standing on those evidences, pleaded with the court of heaven and a verdict for her release was passed in the heavens. It takes a lot of spiritual intelligence to be able to reverse something that has already been done. During the course of this lecture, if we have time, because it is my, I've been studying debt for some while, for a while. 
and I found out that most of the burials we have done, we buried people that had no business with death, with the grave. All of these short changes in lifespan that took place are based on manipulations that were done from the realm of the spirit. Are you there? And I'm studying the, te the technology by which we can reverse unauthorized deaths. People that appeared in heaven before their time. Are you still, are you still with me? At least I will give you the tricks. Huh? And if you happen to stumble upon a situation where you, you perceive that this death is unauthorized, there are a few things you should do. If it doesn't work, then let's go for a barrier. But don't go for a barrier without trying. The devil's assignment is to steal, is to kill, is to destroy. That's what it does. If he shows up, you might see him with dark bubbles, goggles. He's not trying to take a picture. He doesn't want to do selfie. The reason why he showed up is because he wants to kill. Exactly. So there's this angle of iniquity. There's this angle of iniquity. And I've seen very diligent pastors in ministry, very diligent pastors, and with all the labor, 25 years, 30 years, there is no breakthrough. <laughs> it is not because they are slothful. It's not because they don't know how to pray. It's not because they don't understand the Bible. But there are many other matters that can be overlooked, that can be the reason for which their destiny is being manipulated. There's nothing wrong with starting small, but there's everything wrong with remaining small. Everything is wrong with it. Because the Bible says, though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly... He said, a little one will become a thousand. A small one will become a strong nation. So God, the approved way of beginning is small, but as your capacity in the spirit begins to increase, your stature begins to increase, your faithfulness before the Lord begins to increase, he begins to give you more measures and more measures and more measures. That is supposed to be the story of everyone that is faithful in the labors of God. How I wish it was that simple. There are other factors that can manipulate outcomes. If there is a record of iniquity in the lineage, Satan can use that as an argument. Are you there? Right? Oh, my time is gone. So let's stop here and pray. We'll continue tomorrow. But you know, you, you know what Sunday is about? Sunday we want to pray and then take care of some matters and allow God to bring about an intervention. It's not just to teach. We'll give a sufficient opportunity to exercise our spirit and then we'll be able to pick up things that are shifting in the realm of the spirit on Sundays during our lectures um, in this season of praying and fasting. Before I round up, number three, your own personal commit, commitment to sin can become a platform that Satan can use to manipulate your destiny. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Then he gave us a, a commentary in verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. The garments that Joshua was wearing gave Satan jurisdiction, even before the presence of God. Satan was standing to resist him. The only reason why God had the authority to rebuke Satan, are you there? Is because of a statement made in that scripture. He said, is this not a brand propped up of the fire? You know the meaning of that? It means that because of his sin, God allowed him to be plunged into judgment. That fire, there is judgment. 
So he had finished the requirement of judgment. That is why God is in his own right to rebuke. You can no longer resist him because he has survived the judgment that is due for the trespass that he committed. The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Many times when God allows you to go through seasons of judgment, it is so that he can remove the legality upon which Satan is standing to resist your destiny, to manipulate your destiny. May you become courageous not to give Satan any place in your life. May you. No matter how sin is presented to you, may you find courage. May you find that courage to break loose because Satan is seeking an occasion to resist your destiny. I was told of an evangelist those days. Oh, there, were, there were radios, but there were no televisions those, those, those days. He used to hold a radio program. And when he preaches, he will ask people to put their hands on radios. And all kinds of healings break out across the country. Radio. Radio became an instrument through which the healing balm of Jesus could be transmitted. He was a legend. A man that God had bestowed fine grace upon. After a while, he became silent. And he did not die. Someone was there when he was confessing that his spiritual sap has been drained by women. He had sap. It was drained. And Satan was standing to resist him. Please help me tell your neighbor, life is spiritual. You must prepare for life with a spiritual mindset. Now, so I'm going to stop here. And then we'll take the next 15 minutes to pray. The prayer is very, very intentional. The first prayer point we want to pray is against possible negative inheritances. Possible negative inheritances. Possible negative inheritance. Now listen to me, listen to me. Stay, stay with me. One of my covenant friends is grandfather was the custodian of a masquerade in my tribe called Ukuboku. Please don't laugh, don't laugh. I don't even know. Is it that they ran out of names that they, they now <laughs> it's only strange names they have to give? <laughs> His grandfather was the custodian of the Uboku masquerade. His dad born again, and his dad never allowed him to go to close to any of those traditional things. But from the age of nine, he started seeing Ukoku appear to him in his dream. That's an inheritance. The man I'm talking about is a great preacher. So one of those days, he now said, Ukoko is still, do you know we had to travel from Makodi? Went to all the houses that they stayed in, in a certain state and broke those powers. It's not in the dream. We went, I, I said, me, as busy as you think I am, I had time because that, my friend, is my man. But Upoku, Upoku. He told me that he slept on the bed one day and woke up from under the bed. Upoku had. <laughs> I'm talking of a tongue, a, vi a violent tongue talker. Woke up from under the bed many times. Upoku had transported him from on top of the bed and put him on. May 
may the Lord give us understanding in the name of Jesus. So when we went for that word round in prayer and priesthood, we cut off that inheritance. Because I couldn't imagine how the world would be if something happens to that, my friend. No. We have to stop preaching and, and attend to that matter. And when we went, the Lord honored our voice. That legality was cut off. New seasons opened for him. So the matter that I'm talking about has, oh, is a matter that I've seen again and again. So we are going to do some work tonight. Are you with me? We we'll use 20 minutes to do. Hey, you see, the Lord has sent angels already. So can you rise on your feet? Let's do some matters. The first issue we want to deal with here is the issue of possible negative inheritance. Possible negative inheritance. Not every one of us, not like um, Evangelist Philip, his father was among the young men that defended the missionaries when they came with the gospel. So he may not need to pray this prayer. But for, my, for some of us, your grandfather was the one selling slaves at the, uh, the border. <laughs> Can we cry? To him? Can we cry to him? Can we reject that inheritance? For if any man be in Christ, my inheritance can only come from Christ. That inheritance, that liability that has been added to the spiritual infrastructure around your life, can you confront it by the power that is in the blood of Jesus? This is not the way my name will be written. As you cry, cry for your children also. We reject that liability. We reject it in the name of Jesus. You can reject it. Can another seek it up my heart? The other can never summer. Light up Oscar Isla. The Cobama Light up. Alla Brascante. Akaya Bosama. Rantaba Bosabacata. And I can never bolo Kayabalata. Bigger Basanta. Bigger Presto de Palatalia. And I can never Come on, 
seen something something strong oh listen to me listen 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 listen, listen. you know what I'm seeing here I'm seeing human sacrifice and I can see a young boy a young boy is around the age of eight and nine that was sacrificed in one of the families represented in this place. The reason for the patterns, the reason for the negative patterns is that blood that is speaking. Now, because the matter probably happened before the members of such families that are here present were born, we will need to ask God to do something for us to identify the individuals that are concerned. Hallelujah. Now, please forgive me, but I know some people in the auditorium are much older than I am. Just forgive me for a moment. Can you put your right hand on your forehead? All right, I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, that family represented here this evening, that an allegation of human sacrifice has been leveled against them that is responsible for the judgments, for the trends, the strange trends. I want to ask, Lord, stretch forth your hand and by a touch of your anointing, help us identify the family that is implicated by this insight, by a touch of your anointing by a touch of your anointing, so that we can intervene, so that we can plead, so that we can pour repentance. I ask, oh God, that you search through the congregation. Oh my God. Search through the congregation. Search through the congregation. Search through the congregation. Search through the congregation from my left hand side to my right hand side and, and identify by a touch of the anointing by a touch of the anointing. Please put your hands down. So ushers, you bring that person. We, we have to... I'm seeing a demon. This demon is in the likeness of... Oh my God. It's in the likeness of a monkey. 
this demon is responsible for spoiling the things of this person. Opportunities. Privileges. Cycles of misfortune. There is a, there is a monkey-like creature that I see in the spirit. A monkey-like creature that I see in the spirit. Father, that one, that this demon, this monkey-like creature has been sent to destroy the opportunities, to close the doors, to bring reproach, to bring reproach. Nothing works. Nothing works. Are you sure of this? And there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, 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 break every chain. Now listen. I want to give somebody a sign. If the sign applies to you, come on. Mm. This is the sign that I saw in the spirit. There is a grave, a grave in your compound. And one day, when you came, you noticed that that grave was open. That's the sign I give you. If it happened in your family, come out. There is a grave because I'm seeing an open grave. To break every chain, 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 break every chain. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. 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 Break every The oppression of reproach will be arrested in a moment. I'll just touch you. Just touch you on the head. I'll just touch you on the head. Just gently. Break every chain. Every chain. Break 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 every chain, 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 break every We have Is that another line? Okay, just the ushers. All right, Lord, in the name of Jesus, those ones standing here. 
that the opening of a grave was a sign of the spirit of reproach descending to afflict the members of that family, descending to afflict the members of that clan, descending to afflict the members of that community. I ask, Lord, that your mighty hand of anointing, your hand of power, might identify those individuals, those individuals that the signal of reproach was sent forth as a means of bondage, a means of manipulation. Oh my God, he's coming already. He's coming. His hand is coming. His hand is coming. Show us a sign. Show us a sign. And let the yoke break. Let the yoke break. Let it 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 break. Holy Ghost. Every transaction that was done that implicated your family. A bloodline based kind of bondage. Oh, Kabote Keski Tokobe Balia, Abreka Temina Skunde Bakotomagit. We bring you out of the pit. We command that hand of influence, desiring to manipulate and to shave the hair of members of the family. Let that hand lose its authority. We come by the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. We come by the power that is in the blood. In the blood. I say Satan, release. Release them. 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 Release them in the name of Jesus. Everything that the caterpillars ate, that the canker worm ate, that the palmer worm ate, years of toil on end without results. We put an end to that cycle in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come before you. You have done what you know how to do best. We thank you, Lord, for this deliverance that has taken place tonight. We thank you because as many that had the property of the dead hanging around them, they have been removed. Amen. And therefore, you have no right Oh, grave, to open, to take somebody else. Oh, Father, every cloth, every property, ring, earrings, yes, Lord. Puriare saketo robobo shata, ribrosa katika rabaza, e rambrosa ta bango sikare sate sate, ikoto danchiki o sata yaketara, huriaba sandere bosaya. I command in the name of Jesus go back and those of you standing here lift up your hands you are alive you are living you will not die no more conversation with the dead let the dead remain in the grave Pakaro shatarababa sharabo zatata ikato zataraba. Hey, somebody, your own is a, your sister's singlet. Oh, you were it was it's so precious, and you've been thinking about it. Tonight we disconnect you. Well, oh, whatever agreement you had, tonight is broken. In the name of Jesus. Ikoro satai raba lezu kataraba saya. Hey, Rabo Sata, a hey, lady, yes, those bees, those bees, those bees, your sister left, you'll be using. You have to cut off. Don't use the dead people's clothes. Don't, 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 don't. You have to discard them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take a step backward. Take a step backward. You are no more where you were before prayers were made for you. And don't take those things away with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you go back to your seat, we'll spend one minute speaking in tongues. Some things are opening up right now. Can you exercise yourself in the spirit? Can you exercise yourself in the spirit? Can you exercise yourself in the spirit? 
in the spirit, 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 in the spirit. Break every chain. 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 Break every ch